we have uh, a cup, we have a mug with a handle, we have this thing. So one of these objects is different. If you guessed a mug, then you probably know something about topology or are a topologist. Or you're just an idiot, because I would have guessed I would have I would have said this freaky. So I mean we can we can agree on this, right? We can take a a ball and you can take a, a donut. And we can agree that these objects they're different, right? Uh, you take this sphere, squish it and mold it enough, I'll get this shape. You know, and that's this guy. Same shape. Yeah, another thing I could do with this sphere is I, I, could, I could punch it a little bit. So I'll get this shape. If I punch it enough and this dimple gets really deep, you know, I'll get a cup. However, a donut, uh, what I could do is I could, I could basically um, put all the mass and lump it over here so I get this shape. And then I could do what I did with this cup and I'll just punch it. Well, that, that's a mug. I mean, it's not a very good mug, but you know, if I punch it enough, I'll, get, I'll be able to hold coffee here and it's a mug. These two things are topologically equivalent and this, this group of objects here are another set of topological equivalents. What we're going to do today is we're just going to define, I'll, I'll show you the definition of a topological space and I'll, and I'll do my best to justify it. And you can go to any book. As a matter of fact, pause the video, right? Well, when I tell you to pause the video, go to any book, look up the definition of topological space, or I don't know, go to Wikipedia maybe. Let's just review the definition. A topological space is a set X with a collection of subsets O, uh, we call them open sets, and if you intersect two open sets, you get another open set. If you take the infinite union of an infinite collection of open sets, you get another open set. And the empty set and the entire space are both open sets. So um, it's really hard to see how this defines space. It's really hard to see, at least for me, it's hard to see how, how to, you know, providing a set of open sets tells you if there's a hole or not in a space. Um, but it does. So for me, open sets are about precision. So O defines precision. And um, so to talk about O in terms of precision, let's talk about sniping. Uh, in particular, consider, consider this guy. And he has a rifle. This is Simo Heha, or I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but he's also known as White Death. He's probably the best sniper ever. Um, let, let's say you, you give him three targets here. Okay, let's call the targets uh, A, B, and C. Ask, ask him to aim at A. He will hit, and if you give him 100 bullets, he will hit all 100 bullets at A. Ask him to aim at B. You give him 100 bullets, he'll hit all 100 bullets at B. Ask him to aim at C. It's no problem. All 100 bullets hit C. If you ask him to start dividing things up, that's no problem. I mean, if you give him 100 bullets and ask him to hit 50 of them at A and 50 at B, that's no problem. He can do that. He'll just aim his gun at A, hit do 50, then at B, and he'll do 50. You can, you can ask him to hit 50 bullets at B, 50 bullets at C. He can do that. And if you give him 120 bullets, he can uh, hit all three uh, with 40 bullets each. And if you ask him to hold fire, he can hold fire. Anyway, I, I say to you that this defines how Simo Heha views these targets. He can be arbitrarily precise, and from, from that he can build up larger sets of imprecision if he wants to. Consider this guy, who I won't name for reasons of copyright. Um, he, he's not as precise as Simo Heha. I mean, he's not totally random either. He'll, he'll, he, he's given the same targets and asked to shoot. And uh, if you give him 100 bullets and ask him to aim at A, 
He can't quite do that. He'll he'll hit 50, about half of the bullets will hit A and about half will hit B. Similarly, if you, if you ask him to aim all his bullets at C, uh, he can't quite do that, but he'll hit half of his bullets will hit C. The other half will hit B because he'll just he'll jerk to the left a little bit. If you ask him to hit B, well, he can't quite do that, but what he could do is, say you give him 100 bullets. What he could do is he could do the following. He could aim at A, half of the bullets will hit A, half will hit B, so that's 50. That's, uh, say, say he does it for 50 of his bullets, so 25 bullets hit A, 25 bullets hit B, and then he'll aim at C for the remaining 50 bullets. So 25 bullets will hit C, and another 25 bullets will hit B. So th there's a total of 25 bullets on A, 25 bullets on C, and now there are 25 plus 25, which is 50 bullets hitting B. So he's in some sense managed to isolate B at least. So that's kind of the, that's the intersection of these two sets, by the way. Also, if you ask him to, to hit all three with equal imprecision, he can certainly do that. Also, if you ask him to hold fire, he's, he's capable of holding fire. These sets form a set of open sets for um, x, where x is equal to the set of three elements, a, b, and c. Let's check that. The first requirement was that if you intersect any two open sets, you get another open set. Okay, so let's take the intersection of A, B with C, B. Well, that just gives us B, and that's one of the, that's this open set here. What if we take uh, A, B intersection with B? Well, that's just B, A, B, uh, intersection with uh, this guy. That just gives us A, B. Well, look at these sets B, B, A, B. These are all in the collection of things we defined as things that he'll hit with bullets. Similarly, we can, we can check C, B, intersection, B equals B, on and on and on. on and on and on. Okay, and we, we look at this list of all these things on the right-hand side of these equations and we notice we never leave this collection here. So this first requirement that if we take any two sets that are open sets and intersect them, we get another open set. This first requirement is satisfied. Let's check the second requirement. What is the second requirement? The second requirement is if we take a list of perhaps infinity open sets, we don't need to do that because we only have a finite number of open sets, but if we take a, any, any number of open sets and take their union, we get another open set. So let's take the union of this guy and this guy. Union C, B equals A, B, C. We see that's in here. Great. Let's take the union of this guy and this guy. And this guy is in here. Let's take the union of guy and this guy. So we see this guy is in here. Great. On and on and on. If you take the intersection of the empty set with any element of O, you'll just get that element of O again. On and on and on. Anyway, after if you check if you take the union of an infinite number of things, you'll stay in the set of open sets. So two is satisfied. So the last thing to check is uh, the third property of topological space. So it's the third property. The third property says that the empty set and the everything set are open sets. So let's see, oh look at that, there's the empty set and there's the everything set. So it looks like uh, this set of sets here, this collection here, which we'll call O of Homer. This set of sets makes the, the set of targets A, B, and C into a topological space. I mean, if you really are to boil this, this topological space down to its essence, 
I, I would I would say this is its essence. It's basically three points uh, such that your ability to target anything is complicated because it's hard for you to differentiate targeting this one and this one, and it's hard to differentiate targeting this one and this one, so that there's sort of like a connection between this target and this target and this target and this target. In contrast, Simo Heha also has a, his own topological space. If, if, you, if you check, uh, the, this set of sets also defines a set of open sets. And uh, th this is actually the power set. I think they call this the dense topology sometimes. Anyway, this is basically the set of all subsets of A, B, and C. And it, it has its own topology. And I, I would say if you boil it down to its essence, uh, this is really the space. It's a space consisting of th three targets. And he can, he can isolate and target each one individually. And there's no couplings between any of them completely disconnected. Notice that th the more open sets there are, it seems like it's more disconnected. I mean, that, I, that's, maybe that's a conjecture. Let's test it. So let's say, let's say we uh, consider Homer again. But we've, uh, we've for one thing, we've gotten him drunk. But another thing is uh, we've decided to put him on a turntable. So this thing is rotating. And uh, so if we draw Homer right here. Here's Homer. This, this will be, this is a bird's eye view. And uh, we, we have these three targets here. Here's the first target. There's target A. Here's target B. And here's target C. Okay, and now ask Homer to aim his 100 bullets at these targets. Now it's going to be completely random. It's just chaos. If you ask him to aim at A, he'll spray a third of his bullets at A, a third of them at B, and a third of them at C. Similarly, if you ask him to aim at C, he'll spray a third of his bullets at C, but also a third at B and a third at A. And if you ask him to aim at B, he'll aim a third of his bullets at A, a third will hit C, and a third will hit B. Continuing the trend that we've had before, what does that mean? It means there's really only one there's only there's really only one set to consider that's not trivial, and then the, then he can hold fire, and that's it. This here, this is drunk Homer, drunk Homer on a turntable, and this set of sets here, which only consists of two sets, this forms a topological space, and you can check. And if you boil this one down to its essence, I'd say this is really what it is. It's a space consisting of three points and you can't disconnect any of them from each other. They're all connected to each other. There's, they're like ultimate, they're really coupled. And look at, it seems like we have shapes now. Here we have something that's like three particles. Here we have a, a row of particles and there, there's no loops in this space. And here we have, you know, three particles that are connected and we have a loop. It's in this sense that defining a set of open sets allows you to define.